Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, this is Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge and this is the Paint Palette Tutorial. It's not a full length tutorial. What we've done is we've broke down the video into six different sections. So we can do six different versions of something. Uh, example, leather, metallics. And you can get a, a good look at six different ways of doing things. So you can find the colour for your army a lot faster than going through loads and loads of tutorials. So in a minute there's going to be six different images with timestamps so you can find the bit of the video that you want and and as this is not a normal layout of tutorial I may not see you at the end although I will be summarizing everything at the end so if I don't see you at the end don't forget to hit like subscribe share with your friends and leave a comment if you want to request any more paint palette videos. All right so this week on the paint palette we are painting power weapons or energy weapons. As always on the paint palette, do not expect the greatest paint quality as it's all about the colour systems. And for the power weapons, I've picked a bunch of prime colours there and uh, a bunch of random colours I thought might be interesting to do. So, the first one is going to be the most classic one of all. We're going to go for a blue power sword. Now I do realise these are not actually power swords, but uh, I snipped off the decorative bits, filed them down, so we could use them as so. And we're going to use Cantor Blue by Games Workshop for this base. Keep your, pin, uh, keep your paint thin, and uh, give it a couple of layers. Once we've got a nice base of that, we're going to add Ali Talk or Ali Talk, Ali Talk, Ali Talk Blue by Games Workshop into the Cantor Blue mix. And now this is going to be a pattern that we're going to continually do. We're going to keep adding paints, then using that paint on its own, then adding another paint. So you'll find whichever one of these uh, swords that you watch me do, it'll pretty much be the same thing. Although some of them are done in reverse. So now we're going to use Alitok Blue or Elatic Blue on its own by Games Workshop. And as you can see, all I've done here to start off with with the first highlight was just start bringing out those sections. Just divide your sword into three parts and just go the opposite way for each of them. So light, dark, light, dark, or dark, light, dark. Um, then what you do is you just simply start colouring the centre section. I tend to colour in the centre section and then start feathering it in towards itself for the highlights. Next up is add techless blue into the Alitok blue. The reason we keep mixing these paints is so we can make this transition a little bit smoother but also add a lot more colours in there. So it's a small area which makes it harder to glaze but if you just keep mixing your colours together you'll get a different sort of transition than you, than you usually would if you just went from one colour straight to the other. Again, just starting in the centre of these and uh, then feathering from the shaded areas to the light areas. After that, it's just techless blue on its own. As you can see, same system again. I'll actually paint a line dead centre to see most of the colour there and that's going to be the point where I want to highlight too. And that point gets smaller and smaller every time with each layer of paint that we put on. Next up, we're going to add Army Painter. No, sorry, we're going to add Temple Guard. Temp <coughs> we're going to add Temple Guard Blue into the Techless Blue, and you can see that's starting to really brighten up in those uh, sections that I've chose to be light. Like I said at the beginning, don't worry about the quality of the paint job. I am uh, obviously throwing these paints down quite quickly to show you the technique. Although they do take, you're going to take about an hour or so or more if you really want to get a nice blend on all these. Next, I'm going to use a Army Painter Blue Tone. As we don't have any Games Workshop blue washers or glazes. Obviously water that down to not overdo anything and also that's going to start blending all those colours together a little bit smoother as uh, you're going to want a nice smooth coat on this. I mean, most of the time 
power weapons like this are on characters and you want your character to stand out so it's definitely worth spending the time on it. Next we're going to use Lawthorn Blue on its own which is a bit of a jump which is what we want we want to go from that shade and we want to start bringing out these little hot spots on the side of the blade it always I notice also it tends to look really mucky until you uh, put an edge highlight around the blade as well so as you can see I've done an edge highlight with the uh, Lawthorn blue there next we're going to add Ulthrain Grey into a the Lothorn Blue and that is basically going to be our final highlight and you can take that up as far as you want you can uh, just highlight all the sharp edges or any of the parts you want or you could not bother at all it's entirely up to you you can keep mixing the Lothorn Blue and the Ulthrain Grey and get the result you want and that's number one done simple blue just by mixing a bunch of paints together and uh, going over and over it while while they are really watered down. It's not too bad of a transition on this one. I think I probably could have done better if I took more time on it, but it's a decent result. Number two, let's uh, go for something a bit different. Red power weapons or energy weapons. And we're going to start with corn red. The reason I picked Corn Red is it's simply a good base. I did water this down though, as I noticed on my last, uh, the last sword that I painted. Uh, the paint ended ended up with that many layers being a bit thick. I could have watered them down and took a bit longer. So I do recommend watering down your Corn Red and applying it in a couple of layers. Next we're going to add Modelair German Grey to the Corn Red which I'm assuming you'll think is a bit weird, but instead of going for the highlights straight away, this time we're going to darken down the corn red. And I do find, or I do use German Grey a lot when I want to darken stuff down with these power swords. Because um, it sort of mutes the colour and starts bringing it towards a black, which is uh, better than just adding black and darkening it down because it might be a bit too strong. After that, we're going to go back to Corn Red with 50-50 mix with Mephiston Red. I'm going to go the opposite way now. So we've sectioned off our, our grey areas there. Now we're going to use this paint to go over the edges of those grey areas and pull back towards the bright sections. Again, this is a sort of a pattern I will repeat a lot. It's going back and forth when I'm using these German greys. With the central piece, I do start in the middle and then feather from one side and then feather from the other side. Next we're going to use Mephiston Red on its own. Start picking out those parts again. Don't be afraid to uh, stretch this out quite far as uh, there's a fair few colours left to go so you do want some space because each time you add this, these colours on it's going to get a little bit smaller. Oh, your workspace is going to get a little bit smaller. Next, we're going to add Evil Sun Scarlet by Games Workshop into the Mephiston Red. As you can see, I uh, start at the tip, but I always take my brush further back away from where I was brushing, and then do it again. It does help to do it that way, as you've got less paint on your brush, and it just helps the transition along. I'm using a wet palette for these videos as well, so I can keep my paint nice and wet. Next, I'm going to use Caraburn, Caraburn Crimson, thin down with some uh, life colour thinner, but you can use water if you want to, or Lamiate Medium, it's completely up to you. I just prefer to use my life thinner at the moment. And that Caraburn Crimson just really brightened up all the reds together, because when once you start getting to Evil Sun Scarlet, it does start to go a little bit orange. Next, I'm going to add Wild Rider Red and bring back some of that orange. That's going to be added into the Evil Sun Scarlet just for a nice gentle transition. And as you can see, the work surface that I'm working on there, it's getting smaller. I 
and uh, the work surface is also slowly getting brighter and that's how you get the sort of energy power effect so we're gonna add wild rider red into the evil sun scarlet now and that's just gonna start bringing up those uh, orangey colors a little bit more bringing up those heat spots that we want it's working closer and closer to the middle of the model not the model, the middle of the uh, light surface. Then it's going to be Wild Rider Red on its own. And uh, yeah, this doesn't look as uh, red as it should on this camera. If you check the end result on the Lazy Susan, you will see just how red it actually is. And also on the thumbnail, it does show up a bit orange on this camera. That's because at the moment we're putting on Wild Rider Red and that is quite an orange colour by Games Workshop. Next, just to tone all that orange down a bit, we're going to use Game Colour Red Tone. I do put this on very thinly with some medium and a couple of layers. It's just to add a filter over the top of it and bring, like, get rid of some of those brush strokes and bring in some more of the uh, red tone. Next, we're going to add Model Colour Ivory into some of the Evil Sun Scarlet. And really start bringing up those uh, sharp light areas that we want. At this point I can see there that my paint is a little bit thicker than it should be. And it's quite a jump from the contrast. Mainly because I put the wash on. So you could put this on first I guess. And then put the red tone. Then come back to this colour again. And obviously I've gone around the edges there to start bringing out uh, some of those details. Because they always look better once you start putting the edges in. Next, I'm just going to add more ivory to that same previous mix. And uh, model colour ivory is sort of an off-white, so it does work really well for bringing out hot areas, although you could possibly use white when working with reds. You don't want to go pink. And what I notice with this one is it doesn't look that great all close up, but once you put it at table length or arm length, it actually really pops. So I did kind of enjoy doing this red one. And there we have it. Like I said, I don't know how red that's going to show up on the final video, but uh, check the Lazy Susan at the end and the uh, thumbnail to see just how red that actually is. Right, number three, I believe. Yep, number three. I do have to apologise for this one. Firstly, we we're going to start with a filthy brown by game color i do apologize if the footage for this doesn't come out i'm going to try and enhance it and fix it but uh the recording of this for some reason the files are quite blurry and pic uh, quite pixelated for some reason so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to talk you through these as we go through um i did reshoot the end so you could see the end result so the system's the same, so I just hope it exports fine for you and fixes it. So we've got the Filthy Brown by Game Color. Now we're adding German Grey by Model Air into the uh, Game Color uh, Filthy Brown. This is very similar to the way I did the red one. Also, if you want to see uh, the paint scheme that's very similar to this, check out the orange one at the end uh, if this footage doesn't turn out very well. Then, all we're going to do is add more German grey. We're just toning that down ever so slightly. It is quite a difficult transition to get as uh, dark yellows uh, they tend to be brown. So I suppose I could have gone for like an amber effect instead but I ended up doing an orange one as well because I wanted to do six different ones so I was sort of stuck there for colours. And as you can see, we're just working our way towards the middle there and towards each edge where the shade needs to be. Then we're going to add even more German grey. This time it's quite thick, uh, not quite thick, quite strong. It's bringing those greys up just to uh, add a contrast to the light yellow or the filthy brown that we've previously put on there. Next up, we're going to go back the opposite way and we're going to use filthy brown. The same way we did the uh, red one, if you can't quite see it properly on camera, is we're just going to start blending from the shaded areas now, 
back into the yellow just to help blend that out cover it up with the previous yellow then we're going to add games workshops uriel yellow into the filthy brown start picking out the hot spots on each of those sections it'll be the same technique so if you've watched any of the other ones it'll be the same technique pretty much all the way through but this is all about the uh, colors now, i really do hope this uh, yellow one comes out all right on the actual final video if not all i can do is apologize um i wasn't going to reshoot it with the time i had left to shoot the video next yo-yo yellow on its own And from what I can see, you can see that they're brightening up. Yellows can be tricky to do. Um, a lot of people find yellow tricky because brightening it up usually makes it go pale or the opposite end. It just starts getting a, I don't know how to describe it, too bright, if that makes sense. Um, too colourful rather than bright. Next, we're going to add... We're just going to... No, we're not going to add... Sorry, next we're going to put model colour deep yellow in the centre piece there. And at the tip of the blade and at the handle of the blade as well. As we're really trying to exaggerate that power weapon effect. This was a really difficult one to do and actually blend. So I can see why people don't really bother with the yellow power weapons. Now we're going to use flat yellow by model color and that's on its own as well because these are so similar as colors that um, they really don't need blending together, uh, mixing together to make that blend. And if my audio is a bit off today then uh, what am I going to do about it? It's Friday afternoon, I could be at home right now. Then we're going to add model colour ivory into the flat yellow because this will make a difference and will uh, really start to lighten it up towards a white. I do like mixing things with the ivory. Um, anything that's not quite white, I do find off-whites are really good for mixing things and just changing the tone of the colour ever so slightly. And all we're going to keep doing now is we're just going to keep adding more model color ivory because model color ivory has obviously got its own yellow tone you can see i've done the edges there so you can go all the way up to ivory if you want to just sharpen up those edges i do find that most of the uh, power sword the tutorials they look they don't look that good until you start putting the edges on and actually sort of like the energy is captured in those edges and it just makes it look so much better So if I learn anything from this bit of video, uh, it would be always edge highlight your power weapons. And as you can see, I uh, took the time to reshoot the actual end result just to try and show you what it ended up like. Sort of an amber power weapon. It's not exactly what I wanted. Um, but I was surprised I managed to do anything with the yellows at all on a power weapon, so... Number four, the purple power weapons. I kind of enjoyed painting these ones. So we're going to start with Games Workshop's Nagaroth Knight for a nice deep purple. It's a, a base paint, so make sure you uh, water it down nicely and uh, make sure you water it down nicely and you know, use two thin coats. I do feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this video, but that's mainly because... Uh, People tend to jump back and forth through these videos to find what they want, so I do have to repeat things. Next, we're going to add Zarius Purple into the Nagaroth Knight. And we're going to use this to start painting our sections. And because it's just a mixture, uh, you can get away with putting that on so you can see it visually. And it doesn't need blending too dramatically. I've followed the same pattern with all of these swords as well just so they uh, look a little bit better on the thumbnail and on the lazy susan next we're just going to use zarius purple on its own
and all we really need to do same with all the other ones is pick out the brightest section start there then take the brush further back and go over it again as it starts to dry and uh, that'll really start to glaze those in sort of it's more like a feathering technique but uh, it'll build up those colors in the center and at the sides where you want them now we're going to add Gene Steeler purple into the Zarius purple and we're going to keep rinsing and repeating the same sort of technique don't be worried if you put it on a little bit too strong for your liking you can always go back to the previous color and just paint the opposite direction which is something I do a lot when I'm doing this in reverse when I need to darken the color down rather than brighten it up You can see those colours, they start to build up there. And always remember that the paint dries uh, darker than when you start with. Then I think it is Gene Steeler Purple on its own. And now we're really starting to get some pink purple uh, colour to it. You'll see me start in the hot spots every time and then uh, get a, a good colour on there and then go and feather it or glaze it back in. Next, we're going to add Scale 75's Miskatonic Grey into the Gene Stealer Purple. Now, Miskatonic Grey is a very pale grey, I would say. It's quite bright as well, so you need to be pretty sparing with that mix to start off with. Again, paint in that centre, go from left to right, pull from the dark areas to the light areas again. And you can see that effects it's starting to build up now. Next, we're going to add model color ivory into the uh, miskatonic grey, and that's really going to brighten up the purple that we've got. I do believe I also end up edge highlighting with this particular mix as well. As you can see, adding the ivory in there has really just muted those colours but made it a lot brighter as well. In, well. It's in comparison to the layers that are underneath it which are quite dark. I appear to have missed something there. Oh no, this is just me adding more model colour ivory. As you can see, you just keep changing the ratios there. And you'll see in your wet palette that they'll start to really you'll be able to see them visually in your wet palette changing those colors and uh, really brightening up and i thought some of this was a little bit too bright so went to the drushi violet by games workshop and did a couple of very thin coats on that till it took it down to a level that i was quite happy with just wanted to uh, bring a little bit more purple to those uh, model color ivory sections just tone them a little bit more And there we have it. You can obviously go back to your Miskatonic and Ivory mix there and just bring out the very tip of the sword and the sharpest edges on that. But uh, I didn't deem it necessary as I've been rinsing and repeating the same thing through this video. So hopefully you'll be able to see that well enough and you'll get the technique for that one. Right, number five. Green. Because green's quite a popular colour for... Uh, plasma weapons and energy weapons and stuff so we're going to start with games workshops caliban green and we're going to apply two thin coats of that or possibly three because it is a base paint and i don't want it to go on thick and you've got to remember that's a very smooth large surface we're working on as well next we're going to add green skin flesh by scale of 75 into the caliban green and first thing we do, same with all the others, is pick out those sections that we're going to make bright. And because we're mixing paint, you can keep mixing as many layers as you want there and just adding a little bit more to it, which is something I'm going to do in a second. But uh, mixing paints for these really does help. So next we're going to add even more green skin flesh into the scale of 70, uh, into the Caliban green, sorry. Because I've already got a semi-step where it's going a little bit green. Now I'm going to start bringing those greens up a lot more. And when it comes to the uh, bit of power sword that's bright in the middle, I just start in the middle of it and then feather from the left of it, from the dark to the middle, and from the right of it, from the dark to the middle. 
and I tend to just follow that pattern and have been doing all the way through this video for those who haven't seen the rest of it. Next we're going to use Games Workshop's Warpstone Glow and this is on its own. It does uh, make a nice transition over those. And starting at the tip there and then I uh, put a nice bit of green on and then go back a little bit with a brush and then pull it all to the same edge. Like I said, I'm using a wet palette for this. Uh, it helps keep the paint nice and thin. And you want your pin, uh, your thi <laughs> sorry, you want you want your paint as thin as possible for stuff like this. Now we're going to add moot green into the warpstone glow, and we're just going to keep brightening this up. There's no limit to how many layers you can do or how many different uh, combinations of color you can add. It's really entirely up to you where you start and end with these things. Next will be Moot Green on its own. You can really start to see the effect take off after you get to the Moot Green here. I do believe I edge highlight it in Moot Green as well. No, apparently not. So now we're going to add scale 75 toxic waste into the moot green, which is um, it's like a yellowish warpstone glow. Um, it's definitely one worth having. It's not one you use often unless you're doing something like this, but uh, definitely a very nice color. Um, doesn't take away from the yellow, sort of adds it, and that that's apparently what I edge highlighted it with. Then it's just going to be Toxic Waste by Scale 75 on its own. Just to uh, bring up some final bright areas. And obviously, as I said on all the other ones, you can add a little bit of model colour ivory into these and just keep going till it's as bright as you want it to be. There's no you don't have to stop anywhere, you can keep going till it's almost a white, if that's what you want. Now that one came out alright but I'd definitely consider re-edge highlighting it with a slightly brighter colour um, as it's not 100% the way I wanted it to be. As you can see all those mixers over the blade they really do help that transition and that look of the power sword. Uh, it will stand out from across the table which is what you want really. And the last one, the weird one, we're gonna do orange. So, Jiroko Orange by Games Workshop. I have no idea how to pronounce that. So, for those that have jumped from the yellow power sword to this one, I will try and... It is the same technique, but uh, hopefully this will have to suffice as the yellow power sword footage probably didn't come out as well as it should have done. Next, we're going to add Troll Slayer Orange on its own. And just... We're using the Jiroko as a uh, base there. I did muck about and then come back and paint over this. So I did do Jiroko orange and then the German grey. But I decided that was too flat. So I decided to go for Troll Slayer orange to brighten it up a little bit. Which is actually quite a nice colour. Now we're going to add German grey by Model Air into the Troll Slayer orange. And we're going to put our shaded areas on instead of our highlighted areas. Uh, it'll be the same technique as we did with the red one and the yellow one. So if you've already watched those, all you really need is the uh, paint list and you can see how this works. So I've painted those on there. Next, I'm just going to add more German grey. See, we're mixing that with the Troll Slay Orange and what it's doing is it's toning the colour... It's not just making it darker, it's also toning it a weird hue. Um, once I realised I could do that with the German Grey by Model Air, I uh, pretty much continually did that. And next, we're going to add a lot more of the German Grey. So it's pretty much German Grey at this point. And we're going to keep feathering that out and putting it in that centre area. I do think this is an interesting technique. I'll probably try it with some more things as well. Just toning everything down with one particular colour. And I think that's just pure German grey at this point. 
but I didn't want to add a black um, because it might make the contrast a bit too dark and black's a bit of a pain to paint back over with an orange so I figured maybe the grey would work quite well for this and once we've got all that on what we're going to do now the same as we did with the yellow one we're going to start in the German grey sections with the Troll Slayer orange and start painting back the other way with wet layers that's going to help that mix of colours and transition that we've done with the German grey uh, just go back the other way and put another filter of the orange over the top of it like I said it's not the smoothest transition but uh, these really aren't about the application of paint they're more about the, uh, the colour schemes after that we're going to use scale 75's Mars Orange which is uh, similar to the Troll Slayer Orange but as you can see it's a, a little bit brighter it's pretty much the same tone maybe a little bit more yellow to it again hitting those same areas there to uh, bring up those highlights then we're going to add Model Air Sunny Skin Tone into the Mars Orange now Sunny Skin Tone is a big jump from the uh, from the Mars Orange it's a really pale orange fleshy sort of tone so you could do that in as many layers as you want but I found it worked pretty well for that again it's the same technique as in all the other ones just bringing up those hot spots and then using the glazing technique I've obviously edge highlighted it in the last colour uh, which always helps then we're going to use Games Workshop's Seraphin Sepia with two two very thin coats just to get it a bit more warm and a bit more orange in the places that I've just diluted it a bit with the sunny skin tone mix then just sunny skin tone just to highlight the edges that I want to be uh, the brightest but I'm just going to go around the whole thing as I thought the edges looked a little bit flat you don't have to do this um, it's completely up to you with these videos where you stop adding the uh, paints and the effects but this is just how I've done it I thought I'd show you the whole thing obviously and there you go that is one orange power sword again I think it could have used a little bit more work but it's a good basis for you to work with if you want to try mucking about making some orange power swords yourself At this point in the video, this is where I would normally do a side-by-side uh, -side comparison so you can see how the different tones have affected things, like in the warm metal video that just came out. But as these are all different colours, I thought I'd go straight for the Lazy Susan and have them uh, do their rotation so you can check them out on the black background, which usually does help, as we've now got a uh, background there that's absorbing all the light. And then you can probably see this a bit better. Now, you should be able to see the red a lot better through this setup. You can see that's a lot more red than it looked in the previous video. So, what can I say? Whether you watched the whole video or you skipped through a bit and got to the end, thank you very much for watching. If you do like these paint palette tutorials, um, leave a comment letting us know. Maybe suggest some other ideas. I've got some human skin that's on the list i've just got to find something to paint so big thank you to uh, athol again because all these parts are from that same box we've managed to get three tutorials out of those so uh big thank you to athol for that one we have some other thank yous to give out we've got our, our patrons who help support this channel we have the Oak boys matt ludwig hoffbauer warren d wack Agnes of dawn mark and dave you guys are awesome all the money they give us goes to uh, getting better equipment and buying more models for the studio as well for the full length painting tutorials and the monthly giveaways. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, check out the banter and brushes where we give something away every month to whoever. Um, and that's just models we don't want from tutorials that we've done. So... We've got one more thank you to the Outpost, our affiliate links. If you want to get yourself some models at 15, 20% off, follow the link in the description below. And every time you use that link, they give us store credit uh, for the advertisement. So that works out and it helps the channel as well. So I do hope you like that video. If you do, don't forget to hit that like, 
share with your friends and uh, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe until next time that's all from us thanks for watching